today is a very exciting day for me beekeeping because it's an opportunity for me to see how my splits are doing. If you saw my last beekeeping video, you know that I attempted to do some splits and I did it a little differently, at least in the respect of where the hives end up. A lot of people take their hives two plus miles away from the original location. I tried this method of facing the hives together and I don't know, did it work? I also came out prepared with extra boxes just in case the stacked up hives are doing really well. That way I can put some frames on there for them to start building honey in. I'll get my smoker going and once again I'm using dried up horse poo. That's horse manure that's very very dry, no moisture. And it's worked out pretty well in the past for a decent fuel for the smoker. It may not be the perfect fuel but it is readily available here and once it's dried out it burns pretty well. I get the pellets broke up a little bit and then I will add some wood chips to help get it going real well. Put the wind on my back. Oops. gloves change colors. I was running low on the blue ones and I couldn't find those exact gloves on Amazon again so I purchased some that were similar weight. I'm curious how the bees are going to react to the different color. I will link to these gloves down below. Maybe they'll work for you. I really want to check on these splits first so let's get into this this split up front next to hive number one first and then we'll check out the split over next to hive number two and then we'll get into hives number one and two and I'll have to explain to you what happened to hive number three because you didn't get to see that on video. This should have according to most people's recommendations should have been taken two plus miles away so that the bees who were in here when they fly out, they wouldn't be drawn back to the original hive. They would establish that new location. But let's open the lid and see how we're doing. Ooh, look at that. Lots of bees. That means somebody found their way home. Again, many people would recommend that I don't let them make their own queens, and I really did intend to go buy queens, but I didn't, and this area has been making queens for me off and on for a while. Uh, I do get some aggressive or defensive bees, but overall it's been pretty well. It's been pretty good. Let's just see if there's a queen in here. I'm on my knees, hopefully... I'm not in fire ants. All right. I do see a queen cup already on the second. Okay. Well, they've been busy. This one, there's a lot of nectar in there. They're collecting a lot of resources. They're flying out and doing, doing their business. All right, this, this one is all resources. There's the pollen or bee bread. Um, so I've heard of bee bread and I kind of know what it is, but have you guys seen a recent video on Doug and Stacy's channel, Off Grid with Doug and Stacy? They had Dr. Leo on there who does uh, horizontalhives.com. And he was explaining bee bread. And basically it's pollen that uh, they've packed away and mixed up and put their own enzymes in there and they ferment it and it turns into the food that the bees eat. 
So every time I've ever said, here's pollen, that little paste in the bottom of the, of the uh, cells, really what I'm referring to is bee bread. Oh, that's not a queen cup. I thought that one on top right there was a queen cup. I don't think it is. I think it's just like a big... No, I don't think it's a queen cup. I do have some emerging bees, bees that are coming out of their cells. I don't see... Sometimes it's hard for me to see. I don't see any... Oh, look, there's a queen cup on the bottom there. And it has larva in it. Can you see that on the bottom? So they are making a queen right there. That's exciting. Hey, right, let's see what else they have. Now I expected this one to work possibly, have a higher chance of working between the two splits because uh, I did actually turn the original hive sideways which is was going to confuse the original bee colony a little bit and get them uh, thinking a little differently so they would find the entrance to the new one so there's a lot of brood here that's uh, emerged lots and lots of bees that's exciting that means this split uh, theoretically at this point this split is, this split is a success or not theoretically, I guess it is because they have a queen cell that they're that they're nursing, and they have bees and resources and brood brood yet to be uh, yet to come out. So that means there's still going to be more bees, and I don't see any eggs, and that makes sense because if there's no queen actively laying how long will it take for that queen bee to hatch fly out mate come back and start doing her job there's another queen there's two more queen cups on this one so they have one active queen cup being worked and Looks like these are empty. Mm -hmm. So they have resources, pollen, or bee bread, nectar, baby bees, a queen being formed. Now, I could just go buy a queen this week and put her in there and uh, stop the production of that one. Oh, look at this. Okay. I think for the first time ever, I may have just seen a mite. I'm not sure, but it was on the back of the, it was a, a little brown dot on the back of a bee. I've never seen that before, so that may have been, that might have been a mite. I don't see any more. Alright, I think this split is in good shape. I'm going to close it up. I have successfully split some in the past, but I don't have a like a super duper track record of being really good at it. Okay, I'm gonna find a brick to put on top of this because this lid is bowing up a little bit. So split number one seems to be in good shape. Split number two over there uh, probably had a slightly lower percentage of possible success because the original hive didn't get turned at all so I faced the other one directly to it I wasn't sure how that was gonna work several people in the comments suggested or at least one person I remember suggested that it may not because of just the bees not coming back to it so let's get into it and see
have a slight disadvantage working in this hive because it's directly in front of that one and yeah it's not the best place to be working well there's lots of bees in there Again, lots of resources, pollen, bee bread, bee cake, and uh, lots of nectar. Yeah, the, these, this hive uh, is not excited about my location here. So there's, there are fewer bees in this one. I see, I see one, one queen cup that's empty on this side. That was probably there already. Lots of drone bees, lots of big male bees in this one. They still have some, some brood to hatch or emerge. This one would be a good candidate for me to go ahead and put a queen in. I need I need to get with my local beekeeper and get some queens. Lots of drones. Uh, lots of lots of nectar, a lot of resources still. There's still some bees coming out, emerging, emerging. Uh, there's an empty queen cup on this one. So th this split already, I think, has uh, lower success. Um, potentially not going to work. Unless I get a queen in there and these bees start taking care of business. So they have lots and lots of resources. And it looks like a lot of drone cells uh, so that that's, it would explain why there's a lot of drones. A lot of bees hanging on there. But I don't see anything that would indicate that they have a queen or they're working on a queen. Okay. I'm going to put this one back together and know that... If I don't get a queen in this one, I'm most likely going to lose it. We'll get back up behind hives one and two so we can check out inside there, see if they need uh, any more uh, boxes for putting, for making honey. This is one of the empty frames that I put in there last time and they are starting to build comb in the middle of that. You can see that collection of bees. They're on some fresh wax so they're building comb. Oh yeah. So they do have some brood going on up in this top box. That is some brood nests, some baby bees so I'm looking for a queen just to make sure I'm not going to put her in the wrong place. can see uh, in the middle of that 
maybe you can see it. Some brood. And then on the back side, they're making lots of fresh comb. Uh, that's That new wax is nice and white. That's fresh comb. And it looks like they're even starting to make a little tiny area of brood nest on the end of that. Uh, brood, you know, they're putting... There's larva in that patch right there on the end. I don't see a queen here. But I'm just going to scoot this one over just in case. Lots of drawn out comb on this one. So they, they are starting their honey. There's no brood in this one. This is all resources. Uh, starting their honey, starting to make honey. Well, I haven't noticed any difference in how the bees react to the, the color of gloves. Nope, they have a queen cup, a little tiny queen cup on that one. Two of them. Lots of brood up in this one. They have uh, actually a couple of queen cups on this one. So they have all kinds of resources up in this top box. They have fresh comb, fresh brood, um, pollen, nectar, all kinds of stuff going on up here. One little queen cup on the bottom of this one too. I think that's five queen cups I've counted. They have lots and lots of bees. So, I don't know. I gotta see some eggs to know if there's a queen busy in here. That's a lot of fresh comb and fresh brood in this one. The bees are being very gentle right now and very appreciative. It's a good day. It's a beautiful day. A little tiny queen cup on that one too, so I think that's six total queen cups. But there's lots of larva. And it looks like probably new larva. It's been, what has it been, uh, a week? Since the last inspection? Okay, this one is loaded with that pollen cake or bee bread. And a lot of brood on this side. And young brood. I think an egg takes three days to become larva. So my guess is my queen is intact. Kind of curious. What's going on in those bottom boxes? See, I put a queen excluder on hive two, but not hive one. I think I could put another box on here. They're looking pretty good. Someone asked in the comments last, uh, on the last video, I think it was the last video, uh, why did I put the queen in the cage? What was I protecting her from? Well, I was really protecting her from me because in the process of manipulating these boxes, 
almost inevitably somebody gets hurt in there. And I, I try to go slowly, so I'm minimizing that. But, um, you know, it just it happens. And right now they're starting to come out a little more defensive because I think I did squish a bee up here. And so if I didn't have the queen, like right now I don't have the queen in a cage and I don't know where she is. So a bee that I squish could be the queen. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm, I'm trying to give the bees plenty of room so I don't squish them, there's always that possibility. And I like twice now I've been able to get the queen into a cage, which just gives me a greater peace of mind that I'm not hurting the queen. Yep, I just took a sting. It's not, it didn't get through the glove, but you can see it on the glove tip there. So that's going to get these bees going a little bit. Alright, down into the next box. Let's see what's going on. That frame is still completely empty. And this one they're building lots of good comb on. They're also building some sideways comb there coming across the, the uh, frames. I'm going to clean that out. This is all nectar in here. I want to scrape some of this wax out to change their direction. I'm trying to do that without harming bees. These are good looking bees. Just pretty. Very pretty. And they, they don't have any uh, any significant comb building on this one yet. These were empty frames that I put in last time. Staggered. So they would start building on those small cell frames. Oh, that's a heavy. That one's heavy. It's got lots. got a lot of brood in it. It's very possible to have a queen on this one. Very, very possible. It's possible to have a queen on any of them, but when there's lots of brood, it just shows where the queen's been hanging out because she's the one that lays the eggs, that, the eggs that turn into brood. I think I have had several attempts of stings on these gloves. I haven't felt any of them, so that's that's good uh, a good sign for the gloves. All right. Oh, there she is. There she is. Right there. Right in the middle, almost. Hopefully, you're getting a view of her. Coming up to the top. Okay. And because I see a queen, I see lots of resources, I see lots of bees. I'm not going I'm not going to 
you know, cause a great big mess in here and take it all apart. I'm going to put this hive back together. They are st starting to get stirred up a bit. I want to blow the smoke to get them off the edges if I can. So I can put this box back up here. Putting the fuzzy towel in there to hopefully catch some beetles. I didn't see any beetles. And really those towels should go a little lower in the hive. Hive number one looks really good. I'm excited that hive number one split looks really good. Hive number one looks, I have to be careful when I adjust my glasses because if I push that mesh up against my face then I'm giving them opportunity. Hive number one split looks really good and I think it's going to be a success. Hive number one itself looks very healthy. Hive number two split. Mm, and if I get a queen in it, maybe I can save it. Hive number two, let's get in and see what that looks like. I think I have a towel in this one we can check. You have some uh, fresh, fresh comb, fresh wax being built on the top of that. Looks like this one needs a new inner cover. It's getting kind of warped. Lots and lots of nice white wax in the top of this one. The last time I was in here, I did release that queen back down into this hive. Hopefully she's still working and doing well. I mentioned Doug and Stacy's guest from HorizontalHives.com. I think his, his name is Dr. Leo something. I can't remember his last name. Sorry, Dr. Leo, if you're watching this. Um, he has HorizontalHives.com and I've talked a lot about building some top bar hives, but I really like the idea of doing the horizontal hives that uses the same frames that these hives do. So I may go that direction instead of top bars. They're building honey. Building honey. Both sides, they're building new comb, putting honey in it. Beautiful. This hive's being nicer than last time. Hive one bees are still hanging out around me. Look at that beautiful white wax. Can you see that? They're starting to put honey in it. Building the other side. Bringing that comb out. And this is above the queen excluder, so I should have no brood up here except for what was already here last time. And I do still have some brood over here, but I believe that was all here last time. They're also starting to fill in some of that empty brood, the empty cells where the brood has come out with nectar. very heavy which means it has a lot of a lot of honey the start of a lot of honey they're already capping that I think I showed you that one last time capped on both sides on the top that's the white stuff on the top coming soon we're gonna have a honey extraction video and it's gonna come off a of hive number two I'm pretty sure pretty certain hive number two is gonna be a good producer of honey this year Oh, that one's very heavy. Lots of honey in that one. Am I showing you guys any of this? Lots of honey in that one. Yeah, they're starting to cap the tops of that one too. So honey, pollen, 
nectar. Oh, look at that. That's, that's lots of good capped honey already. That's exciting. Yep, heavy, heavy honey frames. And I haven't seen any beetles yet. That is encouraging. And this last one shouldn't have a whole lot on it, but let me just take a peek and see. Yeah, they're just drawing out that comb on this one on both sides. So I'm going to put this back together. Let's get down into at least the first box under the queen excluder to see what's going on down there. One of the reasons I like the idea of the horizontal hive or a top bar hive that I have no experience with, but just conceptually, I like the idea because you don't have to take these heavy boxes off to get into another box. You, you work horizontally, sideways. You're only dealing with one frame at a time that way. There's a beetle. I just squashed one beetle. Now we should start seeing some brood. It's an empty frame and there is a beetle in there. Well, this is the one that I took frames out of for, for this split, so there's a lot of empty frames in here. This is all uh, pollen and nectar as well. No brood on that one. And this is a brood. This is a frame almost full of brood. One queen, queen cup on the bottom. Two, uh, two queen cups on the bottom. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know, it's not like they are necessarily replacing their queen. Sometimes they just build them, I guess, to prepare for the possibility. But the hive can exist for a long time with queen cups. There's a lot of the bee bread, pollen, and some brood in this frame. Someday I'm going to have a, uh, a camera person out here with me. I've done that a little bit in the past, but I would really love to do that more often to give you guys a much better view of what's going on. But if I'm going to do this, in most cases, alone, it's going to be not very many camera angles. Now on the bottom of this frame there are one, two, three, four queen cups. This is a frame that has, does not have foundation, which means all of this, the cells in here are natural size, meaning the size they want them, not not forced by the size of a pattern on foundation. And we're back to a lot of resources. So I think they had a couple of frames in the middle there that were um, brewed in this box. So I'm going to stagger these into, I'm going to pull these out, pull the, the empty foundation frames where there's nothing on them. And I'm going to stagger them in the hive with frames that have 
something on them. So I'm going to spread this. It's not really a solid brood nest. So I think it'll be okay to put some frames in between. I'm going to start on the end with a frame that has uh, on one side some resources. Then I'm going to put an empty frame in. Then I'm going to scoot a frame that has lots of resources and a little bit of brood over. Put another empty one. And then scoot this one over. This one being full. Put another empty one. And then scoot this one over again. I am not going to put another box on the top of this one because there's still lots of empty frames. I'm going to put another towel in the top of this one though because I have seen a few beetles. I'm not getting down in the bottom of that. I think the queen down there is fine. This hive looks pretty good. Uh, I'll get into it a little deeper next time if I feel like we need it. For right now, I'm just going to button this up. And we'll move over to hive number three, the hive that you didn't get to see much about. And I'll explain to you why now there's two hives over there. Now behind me is hive number three and a split of hive number three in uh, one of the videos. See, I always get confused about which video it was. It probably was the last video. I think it was Mr. Paul Otis from Pine City Apiary that said, hey, if you want to put those on deeps, you can... Uh, put those mediums staggered in between deep frames and uh, and they'll start drawing those out most likely building cope on most likely building comb on the bottom of the mediums and that way you can get those hives back on deeps instead of leaving them in the mediums I did that and I figured well that's a pretty good opportunity for me to go ahead and split the hive too because it was doing pretty well and I took a chance I split it in the full 10 frame box instead of in a nuke. I don't know. We'll see how it went. Not looking good at all. In fact, it's looking pretty terrible. They definitely don't need this top box. It looks like they maybe are holding out in the middle of this. That is a frame of brood. But it's a frame of brood that I put in there from the other hive. Yep, I definitely went too aggressive on this one. This hive is almost gone. I think really that's just a bunch of nurse bees. Okay, I gotta make a choice here. I overdid it on this one. I did not. Uh, follow any good rules for splits. Uh, I did put a towel in here. Let's see if I got any beetles. I do have a few beetles caught down in there. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that bad... I'm going to take the split that's not doing well over here with um, hive number two. I'm going to take this one frame that's doing okay in here and I'm going to split... I'm going to... I'm going to combine it Hopefully we can salvage the split from Hive 2 using this bad split that I created out of Hive 3. Just 
So now there are 10, actually 9 out of 10 frames in this 10 frame box that has some resources including some brood. I'm going to see if I can find a frame in here, in this box here, that would have some eggs on it, giving this hive a chance to uh, rally around those eggs and create a queen. Just in case I don't have the time to go buy a queen. This may be a poor attempt at saving a split, but right now, given, given my resources and my knowledge, it's the best I can think of. So I'm going to get into hive number three, find a good frame that has some eggs on it, and give this one a solid chance, or at least a chance. I gave hive three this extra box because this hive was looking pretty good when I got into it last week. I don't see a whole lot of activity. It's mostly still empty comb. So I may reduce this back down to just the two boxes and then we'll see if you know that helps bring the their numbers back up there are some bees up in this box but the box itself is mostly empty this one looks a lot more healthy as far as number of bees so I'll be looking for one of these frames it has eggs. That's all. That's mostly all nectar there. That's a lot of brood, but it's older brood, meaning larva, not eggs. Same on the other side. So it wouldn't do a lot of good to put that one in there. Oh, there's the queen. She's doing a good job. Lots of brood in this one. There is a queen cup on this one. I don't want to put the queen over there. There are eggs. So this would actually be a pretty good one to put over. Let me see if I can get her down into the other See if I can get her to crawl onto my tool here. And, okay. She is now down in that box. Great. And you can see how they're building comb on this. There are eggs. There are queen cells. So that one, that one's going to go down in here. I might actually put one more with eggs just to give them a, a fighting chance. They are starting to draw some comb out on these empty frames. That's, that's a good sign. So this frame has three queen cells, or queen cups rather, looking for eggs. There are some eggs in here. So this one would be a fine one to put over here as well. So let me take, I'll take one of these others in here. And I'll do a little swap. My new split here for hive number three is a combination of the split from hive two. It has two frames of brood, including eggs from hive three. I'm gonna cap it off, put the, the lid on it, and call that one uh, good. I'm gonna leave it alone for a while. Then we're going to uh, not put a uh, that third box back on hive number three. The second box has some resources. We are going to get into the bottom to see how that brood nest looks. Maybe I can get a split out of this. Mm -hmm. 
So over here is my split on the bottom. And this is hive three. It actually looks pretty good from the top. There's lots of bees. Let's get in and see how that brood nest looks. There were, there was a queen and eggs in, in this box. Queen moved down into this box, so into the bottom. Let's just see how that brood nest looks. There are some very, very, yep, there's eggs in here. So that's uh, one frame with eggs. Lots and lots of brood and lots of larva. This is all older larva on this one. Uh-oh, I must have squashed one because now I smell the that pheromone. I know that was probably not a very good view of what's going on in Hive 3, but basically the split was a disaster. It wasn't working. There were still some bees in there, some resources. So I took the bees from the near disaster of the Hive 2 split and combined them with 3. Now there's a 10 frame split right here. Hive number 3, the original, so this would be Hive 4 if it works. The original Hive 3 is doing well, but I took one box off the top because they weren't utilizing it and they had lots of space in that second box. And I, wanted, I want them to draw that out and utilize that and then I can put that box back on. So basically what I have here in the apiary today is Hive 1, successful split. Hive 2, combined with 3, the splits. And Hive 2 is doing well, Hive 3 is doing pretty well. We just have a lot of work to do with building the Hive 3 up. I am potentially this weekend going to get more hives. Not sure exactly how that's working, but probably coming soon there'll be another beekeeping episode here on Daddy Kerb's farm where I'm going and purchasing 
some nuke hives, some five frame hives, that are fully established. I am very excited about what's going on here, even though I am making mistakes, I'm learning, and the beekeeping thing is a fun adventure, fun journey. So, I'm trying to get some light on my face here. I'm not gonna get much. Thanks for joining me here on the Daddy Curbs Farm. I do truly believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. Thank you for being a part of my story through this video and allowing me to be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.